Hey everybody, I love using tables on a resume and let me show you why I think it can be really helpful. Um, so let's say you have a list of words here that describe you, yourself, and um, you want to you wanna put them into a bulleted list but you want three columns. So you could do columns and, and that's totally fine. If you like columns, go for it. I don't like columns, I think they're difficult. So um, I'm going to convert it to a table. To do that, I go here to insert and table. If you go down, it says here, convert text to table. And then once you make it into a table, there'll be an option, convert table to text. So you can always go back and forth between what's in a table and pulling it out. So it asks me how many columns and rows. And I actually want it to be three columns and it automatically fixes the rows for me, which is pretty sweet. It's going to break it at the paragraphs. So if you had something um, that was, if you had a list of words that had tabs in between, it could do that or commas. But in this case, paragraphs will work. And the paragraph return is this little purple, uh, not purple, sorry, backwards P. All right, looks good. Now I want to bullet them and I have a couple of options. I can highlight each one and go up to my home which has my bullets and I can pick my bullet. Right? Pretty cool. Um, so do I want to do 700 clicks for each one of these nine words? No, because I am lazy. Lazy. So if there's something repetitive um, using the computer, there's probably a way to automate it. And that's, that's a phrase you should probably get used to hearing. Um, so I've got it selected. I'm going to hit Format Painter here. And a Format Painter copies the formatting from one place to another. And so that includes where the indents are set. It includes the font, um, the font and size. It, if it was bolded, it would include that. It also includes buttons, alignment, borders. All right, so Format Painter, click it once and then I can brush it over the word and it picks it up. Pretty cool, huh? Control Z is undo. And why am I undoing it? Because I want to show you one other thing. Um, double click to grab the word I want to copy. I go up to Format Painter here, click it one time. You can brush it like I did the first time, but you can also just click in the middle of the word and it puts it on there. And that's really handy because sometimes I don't want to have to deal with stopping and trying to get the cursor exactly before the P and all of that. If it's just one word, I'll just grab it and do it that way. But wait, there's more. Okay, double click, Format Painter. I can go down here and I can select this whole row. When I have my cursor out here and it changes to sort of an angled white arrow, it's going to grab the whole row. How slick is that? Now we're talking fast. All right, last one, because yes, yes, there's more. Format Painter, one click. I'm here on the outside. I'm dragging down. How fast is that? I know, it's so exciting. All right, so we've got our bullets. And you go, you know what? I. I want to change my bullet because I am tricky, 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 tricky. All right, that's like an 80s or 90s song, but anyway, very early rap reference there. Let's go here. We got recently used. I have a bullet library. I have changed the list, so that's a little bit different. Define new bullet. Ooh, let's go there. All right, you can use a symbol. Let me show you what those look like. Um, anything in there you want. Very cool. Lots to pick from. Little flag. This may not get you a job, so maybe not. Okay, we're going to go with this one. And I'm going to say OK. Oh, I want to show you this picture. You can go out and find a picture, like a, maybe like a little tiny headshot. If you had one, let's see, you can import it here. How can I import? Going out on a limb here. Didn't practice this. Uh, yeah. Okay, here's where you'd go in and grab a picture. Let me see what I have. Oh, no, that's not it. Error, error. Okay, here's that unicorn headshot. 
So I could grab that picture and make that a bullet. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yes, I can. And look at that, it changed them all. So you could have a little tiny headshot of yourself next to each little bullet point. Might be a little too obnoxious for most jobs, but you know, depends on the job. The last thing I would do here um, is I want to get rid of the I want to get rid of the borders because I want it to look like these words are in columns and um, not quite so organized or I don't know I don't want any lines though so I'm going to go here to no borders taking them all off and there you go you have bulleted list in three columns using tables fairly easy um, okay I'll show you one more thing but really this has got to be all I'm gonna throw my borders back on because I just like to see them when I'm working. I take them off at the end. Okay, let's say I'm gonna put all of these in one cell. I don't want them split up. You can go up here to, here's your table tools, contextual tab. You have your design. We're gonna go through this in another video. And you have your layout. You have this button here, merge cells. Let's see how it goes. Beautiful, beautiful. And now, even better, that down arrow is going to grab that whole column. And I'm going to do a quick key called Control Y, as in yes, ma'am. There's another one. And again, Control Y, because it's just repeating the last thing I did. This is how you get things done fast. It's all about key strokes, learning those keys. Control Z to undo, Control Y will redo the last thing you did. And that's how I was able to merge these without having to go up here and click around a lot. All right, I'm gonna take our borders off. And I know I have my borders in here somewhere. Okay, there's that convert to text button I was telling you about. Borders, no borders, very good. All right, now you have it. I expect um, amazingly cool resumes. And you know what? I'm sorry, I'm gonna show you one more thing. This one's gonna be super fast though. I'm just gonna make a table that looks like that. And at the top of your table, you always wanna have your contact information, right? Um, so nowadays it's all about email. and you would have your personal email, not your work one. That's why. And so I'm trying to remember if they put, that may be all you want to put on the first line. You know what? I'm not even going to put this. I'm just going to make it. What am I going to do? I'm going to do just my name. Yes. I'm going to just do just my name and then I would do, this line would be my address. And do people use phones anymore? Just kidding. drag this line over here and I'm going to get rid of this extra return so that looks really um, narrow but I'll explain what I'm going to do so this information I wouldn't go any smaller than 11 but I don't want it to compete with my name I want my name to be the biggest and the boldest because this resume is about me getting a job right mm -hmm. and um, that was my dog <laughs> he groans <laughs> she groans there's no way I can edit that out, so I apologize in advance. Or, actually, not in advance. Uh, post. Okay, I'll try to get back on track now. It's an Australian healer, by the way. So if you get one of those, just know that you make a lot of noise. I didn't know that when I got her. But they are noisy, and there's a very good chance she'll groan again because it's late and she doesn't understand why we're still awake. Here we got Comic Sans. I like this font because it's sort of light, sort of fun, but still a little bit, you know, straightforward. 
and small caps. Sweet. That's the look I like. So this kind of goes back to my whole um, fonty geek obsession, but I do think that the font you pick on your resume says a lot about your personality. And that's the font I like the best, and I think it somewhat reflects my personality. All right, and here, this is the cool part. We're putting a picture in. So this could be any kind of fun picture. Um, you could have a professional headshot maybe, and you put that in. I'm just trying to, I always go into that folder, and that's not where I'm meant to go. There you go. And I'm gonna go in here. So you've got picture tools for your picture, and I'll do, oh yeah, that's nice. No, kinda of makes me gag. All right, that's fine. I can handle that. Um, it's interesting to watch those. So here, you're in a table, that's why you get your table tab there, and then you're also on a picture, so that's why you get, you got both of those. I'm gonna go here to layout and put it in the very center of the cell. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Must be in here. Position. Oh, I don't know. But that didn't work either. Can I drag it? It's not working so well either. I'm going to backspace that. Okay, that's as far as it's going to go. Interesting. And it won't let me squish the table either. Just in case you thought the teacher knows everything. You just never know everything about computers. All right, we'll try to put this one in the middle. Well, there you go. And I wonder if I can, nope. Okay. I have something set on this that is making it be super big. I bet it's this format. So let's go to something simple. Simpler, more simple. And that's as, that's as much as it's letting me go in. Hmm, huh. interesting. What if I just take that off? I don't know why that, but see how. It, Mm, interesting. Okay. Well, sometimes you just have to mess around with things until you can get them the way that you want them to be. And that is as small as I'm going to be able to get that. Just interesting. Well, there you go. Just dragging it and it's changing it. Mm, great. Okay. I'm going to change the border to be no borders. Let's try again. So there, and that could be the top of my resume if you wanted it to be. Have a little picture and have your name and contact information. I might even throw these over here and throw a line. Where's my bottom? There it is. Line there. Well, okay, there you have one um, starting to a resume, and I can't wait to see what y'all come up with.